Hey, that must be the mill over there. This is a pretty historic place. Did you know this is the first incorporated city west of the Rockies? Let's turn the portal to portal. There may be 15 minutes extra sack time in it. More historic firsts here than any other western city. Take a right here at the light. We want 10th and Washington. First public school, first library, first gold mint, first apple tree planted, first public building, first newspaper, first whiskey still, and the first and only perpendicular street, that elevator right over there. First perpendicular street. Figures. Goes with the first whiskey still. <laughs> <laughs> Address again, ma'am. I'll see the trunk get sent right up. 10th and Washington. 916 Washington. Southeast corner. Sure thing. It's crawling. It's see a man with long robes. In his earthly vocation, he was a preacher. He is holding out his hands to you. Has he heard from John? Has he seen John? You are pained at heart, he says, because John was called away. But have courage. Let it take you forward. Let it that it? He's gone. But who knows, Mary? If we have patience, if we truly believe, maybe we will hear from John himself. Tomorrow, we'll try. About the same time, Mary O'Reilly. Thank you. And don't worry. Goodbye. You don't have to hide it, Maggie. Can you get a room with bath and a continental breakfast for six fifty a week? Don't forget the air conditioning. Yeah, I didn't say anything about air conditioning. Bats, their soft little flapping wings.
already have a deposit on this room. What? And take continental breakfast and bed away from the ladies. Come all the way from um, Chicago. <laughs> Milwaukee. Autumn! Maggie! You didn't write you were coming. I came as soon as I got your letter. Oh, what letter? We wrote from Astoria. I'm Todd Stiles. This is... Oh, yes, yes. Go right in, boys. I'll show you where it is as soon as I catch my breath. Mommy! The French brothers are after him! Once upon a time, there was this little princess, see? Only she was knocked out, sound asleep, on account of a big bad witch who hexed her. Changed her into a monster with a long nose and a fat lip. Well, then Prince Charming made the scene. He bent down. He kissed the little monster. And Alakazam! Up she woke. Changed back into her real self. Still a little monster with a long nose and a fat lip. The moral of the story? Once a monster, always a monster. Now stop following me around. Michael, you apologize to this child this very minute. The world needs to know it's monsters. I hope they get you. Corinne. King of the creeps. Now stop it. We'll find the room, Mrs. Carter. They came just in time, I can see that. Corinne, go and play. Now stop following him. What letter? You've always come first with me, Maggie. I suppose you're wondering why I came during midterm. Well, I wasn't, but it would have occurred to me sooner or later. Whenever you've needed me, I've come. That's right, isn't it, Maggie? Van will jump right out of his skin when he sees you. So whom does it hurt? It's not as if we can't use the money. Oh, I don't go in for any hocus pocus, no trumpet phenomena or a floating ectoplasm. Maybe now and then a little direct voice, maybe just a whisper, but something they like to hear. If you have such miraculous powers, they should be hidden from the world, not flouted or sold. Such things are not for display or sale. They belong to communion with the divine. Does Reverend Thomas know about this? Autumn, Reverend Thomas has been marked with marble under the rectory elms for nine years this September. You'll go to church with me, Maggie. It's prayers you need, and your sister home to look after you. <laughs> Okay, okay, but why embarrass her? We're here now. We can stay here for a week and we'll find another place. Besides, uh, it's close to work. You clock the portal to portal, five minutes. Just an ordinary family. House on the hill, flowers out front, swings for the kids. But you can smell it. Burnt toast. You can see the smoke under the door. Day in, day out, domestic tragedy popping out of the toaster. A piece at a time, a gulp at a time, until you're dead. But nobody can tell, looking at you, just how dead you are. Twenty bucks. Twenty bucks says there's more laughs than tears in this house. One week, you keep score. I don't want to bet against people. Oh, but it's all right to say the pieces of toast and call them dead. Come on, put up a shut up.
years I've thought of this picture. Silly birds frozen in that stormy sky. Do you know something, Maggie? Even as a little girl, when Father first hung it here, I hated those dark birds. I still hate them. I never noticed them. What's she doing here, of all people? Autumn! Welcome, welcome, welcome! Handsome as ever. <laughs> you hear that, Maggie? Some people get thinner as they get older. This one gets fatter. On oh, Van, it's becoming. It really is. <laughs> you hear that, Maggie? If you say you hear that, Maggie, once more, I'll... Maggie, dear. I'll get the tea. Oh, Van, you can't imagine what it's like coming back here after all this time. Of course, there's a lot to do. We mustn't forget that. A lot to do. Maggie's letter. Last we heard you were teaching in Milwaukee. Well, Gary. You haven't quit or anything. Autumn, you didn't quit. Dad? To you. Oh. I bought a slip for Maggie. Oh, she still wears 36, doesn't she? Well, she did the last. Green stripe. Oh, it's fine. A very fine tie. You always loved green, didn't you? That's right. I've always been very partial to green. I got a book for Corinne and a book for Michael. Michael? He could write a book himself. A bestseller. Van! Well. It's awfully nice of you, Autumn. Maggie? I would have brought you all more if I could have. Oh, if that doesn't fit, they said they'd take it back. Autumn, sit down. Oh, yes. Has been a fatiguing day. There's, there's still a spare room for you. I only rent out the front one. The window shade's torn in there, but Van can fix that. Oh, don't you worry, Maggie. I'll be cozy as a kangaroo. Cream or lemon? I always took lemon. Maggie, we've forgotten so much about each other. Haven't we? Maggie, can I see you a minute? Excuse me, Autumn. Have you been sitting there? Well, it says right here, Autumn Ely, 916 Washington. She's not planning to stay, is she? What if she is? It isn't very nice, Michael, spying on people. You look more like your father all the time. Do you remember the last time I saw you? You were just so high. What do you want? Do I have to want something to be with my loved ones? You want something, all right. It shows all over you. Only this isn't the elephant burial ground. Tell her about my contract with Johnson's Van in storage. Go ahead, Aunt Maggie. Tell her how much more time you've got, all of you, before the movers come. Before I pick up that phone and call Mr. Johnson and say, come on over, Mr. Johnson, and move all the junk out of my house! than kids, huh?
something, old buddy. I have to know the specific gravity of Douglas fur plywood is 0.48. Splitting resistance is 63% of birch, and its tensile strength is 6,180 PSI. Now, that's just a sample of a few of the things I learned when we worked at that plywood factory at Grants Pass. Now, did you know any of those things? What's Douglas for? A new kind of uh, mink? Oh, come on now, I'm serious. Why is it they've got you pushing buttons like some PhD at Cape Canaveral, and me and they got wrestling with 20-ton rolls of paper? Well, you see, they've got me working on a machine that's making uh, paper for telephone directories, and you, they've got working on a machine that's making newsprint for tomorrow's paper. Right? Yeah, so? Well, you see, they know I'm stupid. I mean, anybody can read a telephone book, but uh, you. I mean, a guy who knows all that jazz about specific gravity and and tensile strength. I taught. A man like that's got to work around paper they're gonna print words on. Not just numbers, words. See? Overmatched, isn't he? You stay out of this. This is real personal. Judging from the crowd, I'd say it's more public than personal. Now, one to one, that's personal. Three to one, that's public. Takes three to catch him. But Roy here, he's enough to teach him once we catch him. What'd he do? Well, now, you come with me, boy, and you ask my sister. Yeah, go ask her. Honest Jane. What's your story? And you want my public image or my private personality? They're both pretty nauseating. How about the truth? Hey, now, there's a fresh new word. Admit it. You think I'm the first guy I ever went out with her? You're so worried, keep her locked up. I'll kill him. Hey, hey. Easy, easy. Better come down. I like the view. You gotta stop running sooner or later and take your lumps. How about now? You got a couple of referees on the sideline. Why not? You said your brother could take him? About the same size, a little huskier. Let me take him off. All right. did like this picture, but why? Well, did she say why she came back here? How long she intends to stay? She was nine years old when Papa hung it. I remember she stood in front of it and cried all day. I'll tell you something, Maggie. That trunk of hers weighed 200 pounds, enough to keep her here for at least six months. How can she take six months off out of a school year and still expect to hold down a job? Do you want her to hear you? Anyway, the mere sound of the words, hold down a job, has a strange and unconvincing ring coming from your lips, Mr. Van Carter. What do you think genius is? Some flashing pen? Some message out of the blue like that tripe you feed every widow in town? Now, you take Kekulé. When Kekulé got his vision for the closed carbon ring, he was riding on top of a London bus. And right away, everybody said that it was a, the, the bus ride that cleared his head. Well, let me tell you something, lady. Kekulé put in years getting ready for this one single moment. Genius is long patience, long, long patience. 
Well, married to you for 15 years, I must be the leading genius of the Pacific Northwest. Go ahead. Encourage me some more. I thrive on it. I'll invent all kinds of things if you keep encouraging me like that. Oh, shut up. Maybe she's got some fatal disease. What if she came home to die? Why don't you take her and give her one of your five dollar sittings? See if the voices are calling her. Very funny. Yeah. Well, if you ask me, she's dead already. That was a body I took upstairs in the trunk. And that's a spirit out in the kitchen preparing our reunion dinner. She keeps mentioning it. It was my letter that brought her here. I never wrote her more than one letter a year. What could I have possibly have said this year that was any different than all the other years? I'll tell you something, Maggie. Even if she is your own sister, I don't mind a visit, a decent measured visit. All families should see each other every once in a while. But six months with a female of such dedicated good works, I draw the line. Did you see that prayer book she unlimited? And that horsetail marker already set at the gospel of the day? It wouldn't do you any harm to take some time for God. Look who's talking. Really, Maggie? Oh, my. It has been a fatiguing day, hasn't it? I've had enough out of you, young lady. Oh, oh, she's only trying to have a little fun. One week, no television. Well, tell her to stop touching me. She's all dried up. She's your Aunt Autumn. I never saw her before, and I won't let her kiss me. You march right upstairs to your room this very minute. Oh, I phoned you at the mill, but you're so new there, they didn't know what department you were in. You're invited to dinner. Thanks, Mrs. Carter. Well, we don't want to, uh, well, you, you know, bust in. Oh, Autumn insisted, and she's cooking. I insist, too. See, we're a small family and a happy family, and now you boys are part of it. Well, wash up. From the smell of things, it's ready. How's the score now, Dr. Gloom? Tell me something, Todd. After you coined the word togetherness, what did you do for an encore? I used to pretend this was the crow's nest on a whaling schooner. I'd stare out at that old river for hours at a time, just, just waiting for Moby Dick to blow. Man, was I ever a dreamer. White whales, Santa Claus, Mount Olympus, all the saints in the book. Now, you name it, I bought it. That's before you uh, grew up and went out into the world, right? Welcome to the club. Hate Mike Ely. Oh, any day now, they'll hang a banner across Main Street. That's better than hanging you, isn't it? Blame it on my old man. Isn't that the bit? Blame it on the old man. Anybody's old man. Mine had 10 college degrees. And just enough money in the bank to bury him. How do you suppose a man gets that smart? He studies. Yeah. You know how much your pituitary weighs? Your thyroid? The pituitary can weigh anywhere from 350 to 1,100 milligrams. The thyroid, 8 to 50 grams. Okay, so who gets the 8-gram job and who gets the 50? All men are created equal. There's one for the crickets to fiddle away. I like you guys. I like your style. Huh? That was pretty cute today with the France brothers. I owe you. You belt him. Why didn't you? Mr. Stiles, Mr. Murdoch, dinner.
She said she'd meet us at the car. She's still in the attic, killing bats. She missed one. Would you tell your aunt we're waiting? Why not? I said I owe you. Hey, kid. Do you ever just do anything for anybody? Or only because you owe them? Saboteur, and right in our close-knit ranks. Mike, you won't tell him, will you? How long has he been working on this invention? I lost track. Six years. Mike, promise. Well, why bother to break it? Well, nobody needed it, even in the 15th century. Look at me, expecting consideration from you. I ought to have my head examined. All right, go tell him I broke it. What do I care? Listen to me, Mike. How can I let him finish it? How can I let people break his heart and laugh at him again? Why shouldn't he come out here every day and put a few dreams together with a screwdriver? What else has he got to keep himself together? Mike. Promise me you won't tell him. Those two star boarders of yours are waiting out front. you of Samson ready to pull down the temple? Corinne said you threw a rock at her. He didn't. I saw it, Van. Well, you better not. Not much longer, is there, Van? You keeping track of the time? Merlin's magic wand. Go ahead. This? What sort of foolishness is this? It's my Bill of Rights. There was a time when your father and I were very young. I used to take him by the arm and shake him when he was naughty. You're not young anymore, are you, Auntie Arthur? What is this? A house of fear? Does everyone have to walk in one shoe just to try to please you? They're not my father and mother. Aunt Margaret's been like a mother to you. Is this how you thank her? by flapping an eviction notice in their faces every time they try to discipline you? You think they'd care about me if my old man hadn't left the house in my name? Unless they said right there in black and white they can't live here unless they make a home for me? Oh, my poor what's happening? You think a home is tomato juice and clean sheets? You think living is one day after another like... like dogs chasing each other? What have they ever done? Aunt Maggie, I'm 
Maggie in the parlor with one hand in the spirit world and the other, the other in people's pocketbooks. Where's she going? Tell me, where? And Van. You have to wind him up to get him moving. Sure, you put a pack of beer in the icebox, he'll hustle for the opener. But outside of that, forget it. You call that living? You call that making a home? When I'm 21, when I take legal possession, out they go, right on the street. We'll see about Van with his feet on the furniture. Till then, I carry this contract right where I can reach for it. Mr. Fastraw. With Johnson's moving vans just standing by, waiting for the day. Your father must be turning in his grave. I can't hear him. Can you? How about that lecture, huh? Isn't that the excuse you're using for coming back? To, uh, to set my trolley on the track? You're spiteful and spoiled. Only four words. Huh. You could have wired that from Milwaukee and saved the fare. They fired you, huh? I'm on leave. I'm on special leave. <laughs> Some leave. Oh, I look through your trunk. Oh, what's here, huh? What do you expect to find around here? Everything. You better say an extra, hey, God, listen to me if you think some miracle's gonna happen around here. Don't take God's name in vain. What's he ever done for you? Well, you can get knots in your knees praying. Who listens? You're an atheist, too. Well, that's four more words. You could have still sent that telegram. Oh, while you're in contact, how about a sign, huh? Want to ask for a sign? See a few prayers answered? God's ways are not our ways. Oh, that's a big help. Suppose there's no hell, except just, just living, day by day. There's nothing special going for you, except, except tomato juice in the morning and clean sheets once a week. Suppose there's no hell, no heaven, no God. Say all the preachers are wrong. Say you die and they shovel you into the ground and, and there's no more left of you than there is of my dad. Blessed Lord, help this boy. Uphold him. Comfort him in his struggle with his weakness. His little faith. Give him the strength to bear his cross. Dear Jesus, give him a sign. So when we drive around the country, we, we play this, uh, it's kind of a kooky game. Yeah, it's called uh, Fractured Geography. It goes like this, see, I ask, like, what town in Texas had a girl better watch out or she'll be annoyed? El Paso. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's, it's like a pun, you know, Paso. Yeah, there are uh, easy ones, too, like, um, no. what town in Michigan is, is famous for its surgery? It's Lansing. <laughs> <laughs> You think maybe they'll kill Mike? Corinne. I went out and talked to Waldo. He's real mad at Mike. He says that Lynn, Lynn's a sister. Corinne, leave the table. Why don't you go out and talk to them? Oh, it's not my affair. What do you mean? Mike locked up in the house, the Franz tribe parked outside for two days, all the neighbors talking and it's not your affair? They can't stay away from work much longer, so relax. They'll go away. Waldo's on a week's vacation with pay. 
He told me. I told you to leave the table. I'm not at the table, Mommy. Well, go and watch TV. You said I couldn't watch it for a week. Well, watch it for tonight. Yippee! Why don't you call the police? They're on Waldo's side. I don't want any trouble. Now, listen to me. In five months, I get the house. But I don't want to wait. I want you all out tonight. What do I need you for? I'm all alone anyway. You, you bunch of putterers, get out. Everybody through? I'll do them tonight. Yeah, well, I'd like to do them. You a uh, washer or a wiper? You wipe. Uh, Maggie keeps the towels in that cabinet. Poor Michael. You don't understand that, do you? Well, I never hid behind curtains, but... Maybe that's because there weren't any to hide behind. I was always stuck out there in the open, but I figured it out. It's easier to get out there and know what's hitting you than it is to run and try to look at it over your shoulder. At least that way you don't get a stiff neck on top of everything else. Oh, Michael. Poor baby, he's so terrified. He says spiteful things, he doesn't mean them. Not in his heart. He thinks he's all alone. It's not so bad, Miss Ely. Being alone. You don't know. You just don't know. Yeah, I know. And I say it's good we're alone. I say it's good we're all different, all separate. That way, we don't all fall down. That's his tab waiting out there, and nobody can pick it up for him. Only Mike. And if you were my kid, I'd kick him outside. You can't sneak into manhood, Miss Ely. You gotta take your lumps along the way. You gotta let the pain eat the baby fat away, and then, if a guy can still climb back up on his feet, he's got a fighting chance. Maybe he doesn't have to lean. A hide behind curtains like, like your precious Michael. How can we expect anything of Michael when we set him such a bad example? And I'm just as guilty as he is. Well, no, this is none of my business, but I know for a fact that you just, you just got here, so what's wrong with that kid has been wrong for a long time. You can't really blame yourself for that. We're the same, Michael and I. Both running. Both hiding. Both lying. It's got to stop. Michael, you were right. I was fired. Listen to me, Michael. Please listen to me. While I still have the courage. Oh, I'm a useless woman. Look, Aunt Autumn, I am. Um, I hate sentiment, you know? Don't worry, I'm past tears. It's not sympathy I'm after. I say these things to you now. Things I've never even said to myself. I say them to you because I want you to be different. I want you to be truthful with yourself. Stop running. At school, in the science department, Mr. Harrison put a rat in a labyrinth. He let it find the food first, and then he changed the way. 
Poor Ratty battered his head in vain, looking for where the food had gone. His eyes became unspeakably bright. That imploring look of the frustrated. And after the convulsions were done, all that frantic racing was over. The little animal became Mr. Harrison do whatever he wanted to do. How like my own life. Where did I go wrong? Why has all this happened to me? No man in the world to love me. Well, I became embittered, irascible. Nothing passed between me and the children in my class. Nothing but resentment that no child of mine sat out there. Smiling back at me. I became school teacher, Michael. Not a teacher of children. They asked me, they finally asked me to make way for someone who had love in her, something to give. All I ever wanted was love. A home, children to raise. I've asked God, even as I sang his praises, why must I be so loveless? Why must I move from one furnished room to another without even somebody to share a cup of coffee or a good morning? As if I were lost and alone in some strange country where I could never hope to learn the language. Oh, Michael, before you know it, the years know what you. Do you know how long I've waited to be married? Oh, so many, many years. Maybe tomorrow, you say, maybe tomorrow I'll see him. He won't be young. He won't be straight and slender like you are. Nor his hands strong. But that won't matter. Anybody would do. Even if he's ugly and you don't like it, you're willing. You're willing, Michael, because you're so late. And because you lost your way, Michael. You're like that rat. You just take whatever you can get. Just so you don't have to walk back to that room or spend one more night. Without anyone living on prayer. Alone. Ah. Uh. I came here pretending it was to help you with Michael. Your letter just said he was being difficult. That's all. But I needed any excuse. I came here to hide. Oh, oh. A fine refuge this place is, this family. It should be a place where we could light candles and smile at each other across the table. But look at us, me, Van, Michael, all pulling in different directions. I'm ashamed for us, Autumn. Ashamed we failed you. And it's only because we failed each other here before you came. Oh, Michael. Didn't you understand a word? Even one. 
That sign, Aunt Autumn. You're that sign. Heads or tails, we can, we can face out or we can run. Just in case. This has been a Screen Gems film presentation, Herbert B. Leonard, executive producer.